So which is the best wireless keyboard for you and why? Let's go check a bunch out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. That smokiness, guys, so good. That lap song, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. So the idea here is we're going to replace this keyboard. This is an own, O-N-N, -N, I guess, keyboard. I've had this for about a year and a half, two years, really beaten up <laughs> probably millions of keystrokes on it literally the paint on the keys are coming off every once in a while they'll get stuck too so i mean i suppose i could probably take it apart clean it out and maybe it will be good but to be honest there's something more that i need out of a keyboard besides this this is fantastic but the newer keyboards now they're running on Bluetooth, but they have multiple channels built into them. So what that means is we can now use one keyboard on multiple devices. And all of the keyboards that I ended up selecting to buy and to test, I tested about seven keyboards. Um, three of them I just returned right away because they ended up being duplication of others. Um, but let me, let me get into that for a second. For some reason, I don't know what it is, there is a ton of replicas, let's say, on Amazon. So you buy like one product, let's say it's this keyboard, it'll look identical and it'll be in different packaging. And then when you look at it, you put it side by side, it's the same damn keyboard, but with just different lettering on it, different logo, and that's it. So I don't know if it's the same manufacturer, that's just making a whole bunch of them to kind of like flood the Amazon marketplace, which could be the case, or it's multiple people that are buying from like a gray market source and then just slapping their labels on it and that's it. Anyways, like I said, I ended up buying, I think it was seven keyboards, maybe even eight. I returned a bunch of them. I have four left and I wanna show you, these are like kind of the best of the best. One just didn't work out, but I want to not only show you why I thought that they were great and why they weren't, hopefully it'll help you decide, but also I wanna give you kind of like a real world keyboard test so you can hear what they sound like because some of them are kind of junky and some of them sound better than others and so on and so forth. So I wanna get into that with you guys. Hopefully Hopefully you enjoy this. It was in the comments. I know I told a lot of you guys that I needed a new keyboard. I needed one that also does multiple devices and that's what we're getting here. So instead of me just answering in text form, I'm making this video and hopefully this helps a bunch of you because we're gonna be looking at a bunch of keyboards. Just to preface this with, I ended up going with keyboards that are good values. I had some expensive ones, some not expensive ones, and then all the ones that I've selected here are under or around $40. What these devices will allow you to do is use them on Android, on Apple products, so it could be on your phone or an iPad. It could be like an Android tablet, any kind of tablet. You can use it on a PC, on a Mac, on Linux. All these keyboards will work on all of them, but they also will, which is really great, be able to just switch from device to device to device just by changing which channel or which Bluetooth channel that you're on. So that's pretty cool. So all right, so the first keyboard is this one right here. And this is, it comes up as multiple device connections, rechargeable wireless keyboard, and it is the iClever. Now, there's no keyboard in it because I've already taken it out, but I want you to see the packaging because packaging is important too. And we will see with some of these, the packaging is absolute garbage. So this is what it looks like, all right? You have a charging cable, you have a manual. The charging cable I already took out. The manual is very small, which is to be expected. This is what it looks like. Nothing much here to be talked about. It kind of is what it is. I do like 
that the type on this is pretty good. So you can actually read everything. And this manual is in English. It's not in multiple languages, which I do like also, because if you're selling the keyboard in the US, put a US instruction or user manual in it. If you're selling the device in a Spanish speaking country, well, put a user manual that's in Spanish or in Chinese or in Japanese or whatever. There's no reason to have a whole bunch and end up having this thing so massive because it has every language in it. That's just cheap in my personal opinion. Anyways, they give you this also, which is those little um, covers for the keyboard to keep them from gunk getting inside of them. I absolutely hate these. I know some people really love them. My wife loves these things. I hate them. It just doesn't feel right to me. They don't feel right. Now, this is the keyboard. So you can see what it looks like. This is, once again, this iClever device. Um, and we could put this aside and this would go right over it like i was saying before right on top of it like this and i just don't like it we're just we're not even gonna we're not even gonna look at that thing i'll just push that to the side anyway so this is the keyboard now if you look here on the side you have your usb seat charging little spot this is like the norm these days right you can kind of see it right in here so that's how this goes now this keyboard was really great um, it feels good, right? It has like a good feel to it. Matter of fact, um, let me go ahead and bring in a microphone. All right, so this is the RE20. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna do this, hang this right about here. And now what we'll be able to do is you'll be able to hear me type on this. There you go. So that's kind of like the sound of this one. It's not too loud, but it does have like a little bit of a kind of a tinny sound to it. It's not bad though. It is not bad. The problem with this keyboard was twofold. Number one, I do not like, absolutely cannot stand this right here. This up, down, left, and right. I'm just not used to that because like, this is the old keyboard, right? And you have it like separate right here and they're big. And when I'm editing, I use this a lot. So when I started using this keyboard, I'm like, oh my God, this, this thing is horrible. The problem is, is while this keyboard is nice and compact, it's just too compact. I need to have these buttons in the open and I need these things to be larger. That's number one. But the biggest problem with this iClever keyboard is it broke after two days. After two days. You could turn it on and you can see the power is on. You can see that it's green here. But guess what? doesn't matter. You can't switch between your Bluetooth devices for some reason. I don't know if it's the Bluetooth radio in here that just decided to die. I don't know. Doesn't matter if it's the iPad or my phone or the Mac Book Pro or the PC, it just doesn't recognize it. So literally I got about 48 hours of use out of this keyboard until it died. So can I recommend this iClever keyboard? The answer is no, absolutely not. So we're gonna push that to the side. So I ended up getting another one. Once again, this is like number two. I think we have four to take a look at. This is what it looks like. It is a Artec. I guess it would be considered Artec is the name on it. Um, it does say that it has frustration free packaging. The packaging is definitely very lightweight. Let me go back to the top cam so you can see this downward shot here. So this is what it looks like. Now let's go ahead and open it just so you can see. The packaging is minimalistic, which I'm okay with. I don't need a ton of packaging as long as it's done decently. Um, and this is what it looks like. Now. I'm gonna pull this out just so you can see it. I've tested this one out 
for, uh, I think this was about a day or two just to check it out to see how it is. It looks very similar to the other one as you can see. It has your on off over here. It has Bluetooth one, two and three, basically three Bluetooth channels so you can switch from device. Maybe like I said, an iPad, maybe your PC and then maybe your Mac or something like that. So this is exactly what I was looking for. Now the build on it is not bad. You have, it's, I would say plastic on this side. This side has like maybe an aluminum type of feel to it, but nothing, you know, fabulous. It's not bad. It doesn't bend. It's not like really cheaply made or anything, but the keys is what I really didn't like. Now, as far as what comes in it, it does have a book. You have this little good, bad, or indifferent thing in here. Once again, we have a book that's in multiple languages and there's really nothing in here. This side here, you can see this is all Chinese. And on this side, we have the English and there's not much to it. Just like the other one, there really doesn't need to be too much to it. It tells you basically what it does and what it doesn't do and how to do it so and what the keys are so this is all that you get and of course you get your charging cable in here too and this is it now let me put this aside so you can hear what this one sounds like so let me go ahead and bring down this mic once again here we go this is the re20 this is going to be our test mic coming down into the frame here so i'm going to type but now listen to what this sounds like So it does, it has like a certain feel to it that's not bad, but the problem that I have is like, even when you push like the space bar, it doesn't have a good tactile response to it. It just feels like a plastic switch. It doesn't have any click to it. And then the sound of it, It just doesn't have a good feel to the keys themselves. So when you're typing on them, it's kind of like whatever. The letters sound like this, but now listen to the enter key or the space bar. Here's a letter, space bar, enter key. You see, it's like a different sound altogether. And the enter key and the space bar, space bar especially, if you kind of tap it on the side, it just doesn't give the same equal pressure it feels. It's just not quite that great. Now, is it bad? No. Once again, this does have USB charging. You can see that right here. They all have that and these keyboards all have built-in batteries. So it's not like you have to pull out like a whole bunch of triple A's like the old keyboards used to be. Now the actual ergonomic of it is actually nice. I like that it sits very flat. It has a good angle to it. It's not over angled. So you're like this, it's not under. I mean, it's pretty good. My major beef here is the keys. The letters aren't too bad, but this space bar, and this enter key, it's just not great. Now, as far as switching between one, two, and three on the channels, it had no problem. And the keyboard actually worked for a couple of days. It didn't die like the iClever keyboard that just absolutely just died and that was the end of it. The way I look at this is the keyboard itself was good, but it just didn't have the tactile response that I wanted. Now, I don't expect a under $40 keyboard to have, you know, beautiful switches in them, right? That I would pay for $150, a $200 really nice proper keyboard. Now, I have those two, but the thing is, is I really want something that is specific to this table that will allow me to do multiple devices. It's nice and thin. I can move it around easily. So having a big keyboard, like I would call a gaming keyboard, board with the clicks, you know, and I mean, that's great and all, but if I'm on a stream, I don't want you to hear clack, 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 clack when I'm typing to someone, right? So I want it to be a little bit softer, but I still want to get that same tactile response. So that one was okay, but still not the one. And that is once again, the Artec. Now I ended up picking up this one right here by Cinda, right? So let me go and see if that will zoom in there. There we go. Cinda, I guess Cinda is the name. 
Now this is one of the keyboards, like I was telling you guys before. Matter of fact, let me get this top down shot again here, just like that. This was once again, one of those keyboards that I was talking about earlier, where I have another one that I'm gonna show you in just a minute, that it's literally the same keyboard or pretty damn close to the same keyboard. So just like the other one, we have this little key protector. I really, once again, don't like them. I'll just put that aside. But when we look at it, the keyboard now is really quite nice. This one I like a lot. Now, let me just move this stuff out of the way, just like this, that's perfect. Let me get that out of here. Even though I did like that iClever keyboard, it died after two days and it didn't have this proper area here, that home, the up, down, you know, your page up, page down. I really like this. Now, once again, just like the other one, you come and just turn this over and instead of the connection being here on the side like the other ones, you can see it right here on the top which is fine with me. It doesn't matter if it's on the side or to this side. It is a USB-C, just like the rest of them. It also has the built-in batteries, just like the rest of them. But this one feels much nicer. Now, let me go ahead and bring that microphone down again so you can hear what this sounds like. Now, this is what the keys sound like when you push them. That's the keys. Now, this is the space bar and the enter key. Now, it, the sound of it is pretty similar to the other keyboard. It's a little bit louder than I would like, but the difference is these keys, the keystroke itself, feels really good. It actually gives you a nice tactile response. When you push the key, you know you pushed it. That Artec, when you pushed it, you really don't know if you pushed it or not. You didn't get that little snap that this one gives you. So I really like this a lot. This is like so far my favorite. Just to show you a comparison between the two. So this right here is the new one, which is that Cinda. And this is the Artec, right? But now listen to this. It's kind of like a thud, right? When I drop this one, listen. It's like a rattling mess. This is this Artec one. So, and that that kind of makes sense because it just it just has a cheaper feel. This feels like rugged, heavy duty type of feel to it. Even when you push the keys, this, when you push the keys, it's like, a, it's not a good response. It's almost like the keys roll over on themselves instead of actually getting a good full tap, let's say, and like, like, look, if I'm pushing here, you see what that sounds like? And then if I push on this one, you can actually feel the key fully depressed compared to this. It's kind of like flat. You don't really know. Did it go through? Did it not? You know, whereas this one, you can feel the little snap, even though it's not loud, you can feel it. So I really like that compared to this. And definitely this just sounds just cheap. Like stuff is rattling inside. Not great. Now, the next one that I want to show you, let me switch this back up like this. So like I said, I like the keyboard that Aztec or whatever, or Arctech, or yeah, it's called an Arctech. The keyboard itself is okay. But like I said, it just, it just, you hear that? Can you hear that? It just sounds cheap and rattly. Listen to this one. It's just solid right? So it's definitely something that you can feel the difference between one keyboard and the next. And once again, they're both $40. Now, another keyboard that I ended up picking up after I got that one, or actually the same time I got that one, was this one. And this is from, let's see, Uzdem, I guess it would be. Uzdem. I think it's called Uzdem. There you go. A-U-S-D-O-M. Uzdem, I guess. Anyways, this one is my favorite. Okay, I saved my favorite for last, but what you're gonna see here is it's literally identical to that Cinda that I just showed you, this one, the one that's like heavy duty. Let me go and come back from the top down camera here. So this is what this one looks like. Now, look at the packaging difference between this one and the other one, right? So look what this looks like. I mean, this is a great box, it's fantastic. And look at this, nice little attention to detail. 
right? Not bad. And then here is the keyboard. Now, once again, the keyboard is the same as the other one. And that's where I said, well, what is going on here? Now, the manual is a lot more detailed, as you can see. It does have Chinese on one half and then English on the other, which I would rather see just a smaller one in there and they actually change them like I said before, but that's okay. The manual is good enough. You have your nice little USB-C connection to be able to charge it. And if we look here, we'll see that the charging spot is where? In the exact same spot as the other keyboard. Right, so let me move this packaging out of the way so that I can show this to you. Which, I mean, and this is the kind of stuff that we see all the time over with Amazon. So these are the two keyboards, right? Now look at this. I mean, is this not identical? Look, you have your on off, your little indicator light right here. And then of course your USB-C for your charging. This is identical. There is nothing different between this and this, but, even though that is the case, when we look at them, when we put them side by side, we can see that it is the absolute same keyboard, right? But now if we go and like hit it like we did before, solid. We hit the other one, solid. The exact same keyboard. The only difference that I have found between these two, obviously it is a rebrand of the same keyboard in a different color by a different company. One company uses exceptional packaging, which is this Ustum people, and the other one does kind of more of a generic packaging. But that's okay. I'm just looking at the keyboard itself. Now, the difference that I found is even though these are identical keyboards, the white one has a little bit better feel to me and it sounds a little bit better. Now, I don't know if this will be able to really pick it up, but if we come over here and just hit the letters, that's what the letters sound like over here. Let me move this over to here. Very similar. Spacebar. You hear that? Enter key. Something about the white keys they have a little click or an extra click to them. They just feel a little bit better. I feel that it's as loud as each other, but these white keys just feel better. Why is that? I really don't know. Now, are they different? They probably aren't, but maybe the keys themselves in white, they're probably not painted white. It's probably a different lot, a different die lot from these keys to these keys, and maybe these are just better or maybe the mechanism underneath them are different. I don't know. I really don't know. But this white keyboard feels better to me. It has a snappier response. You really know when you make that click, whereas this one is a little bit softer. I would say the gray one is a little bit more silent than the white one, but the white one gives you just a better tactile response when you're typing. And once again, they all have the exact same thing. You have your charger, you have your Bluetooth one, two, and three, so you can set up three separate devices for this keyboard, which I think is awesome. And it has the larger up, down, left, and right. You have your page up, page down, your home, and insert, delete, all of this here, which I love. And this is something that I absolutely wanted. So between these two keyboards, I would say you could purchase either one. They're both under $40. But for me, this white version from this Usum people, Usum, I guess, whatever, these people, I just feel like there's more attention to detail when it came to the packaging, as well as the keys having a more snappier response to them. I really feel that I know when I actually made that connection with the key in comparison to this one, which is a little bit more silent, but it just doesn't have quite as much of that connection to me. So at any rate, I would have to say kind of to recap and I'll put them all up here so that you can see them. Let me come back to this top down. We have the one white keyboard. This is the one that we're going to end up keeping. We have this, which is the gray one. And then of course we have this keyboard, which is the one that ended up working for two days and then it was dead. And this is the iClever. 
I would not recommend this at all. And then finally, we have this one, which is that Artec. The Artec was good. I do like it. It has a good feel to it. It's thin, it has like the aluminum back to it. Um, I like it. I like the keys. It's not bad, but the problem with this one is it's, it's really kind of janky. It just, you can just hear it. It's just like a rattling, vibrating mess, right? Whereas even the one that died, when you hit it, listen to it. It still has like a vibration to it that doesn't sound great. Whereas these keyboards, if you listen to it, listen to this. It's a bit, when you hear this, I mean, it's a big difference. These are solid, right? You can hear it solid. It's not this janky type of, I don't know, like vibration. Just kind of junky. So while all of these are good keyboards, I would say steer clear of this iClever. I mean, if a keyboard dies in two days, I have a problem with it. If it sounds like this, I got a problem with that also. It's just not made very, let's say, sturdy. It's just kind of cheaply made. Also with this Artec, um, I am a fan of the keyboard. I like the way it's set up. It feels great. I like everything about it. I mean, yeah, it does have a little bit of a kind of cheesy sound to it. It's not quite as strong or as sturdy as the other two, but it's not bad. I think the biggest problem with this is the price is the same as these two keyboards, and it's just simply not of the same quality as these two. So if you're gonna spend money, then I would say, pick up one of these two. If you want one that does not make as much noise, I would say pick up this one, it's a little bit more silent. If you want a little bit more of a tactile response, I would say pick up this white one. It's made by two companies, but obviously we can see the same manufacturer made these keyboards. They are identical. These are obviously relabeled same exact keyboard, but we know that there is a switch difference or a key difference between these two. And that is really about it. Everything else is identical. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting. For me, I just think that your work area is like your sanctuary. If you have a work area that is conducive to work and you want to work there and you feel comfortable and you feel like you can get a lot of work done and everything is smooth, I think that your productivity is much better. And for me, I look at everything that I do on a daily basis and then analyze productivity. And is there something that is there that should be switched out for something else that would make me more productive, that would make my life less miserable or allow me to do stuff easier or faster or whatever. So I look at everything like that. That's matter of fact, the reason why I got the stream decks because the stream decks allow me to just push a key and be able to get things done instead of fussing around with other stuff. I just push a key and that's it. The same reason why I use these mice. This right here is a Logitech. This is a G502. I have the exact same G502 in wireless. Some people be like, well, now that you have a keyboard that you can swap from device to device to device by just clicking it, why don't you get a mouse that matches it and then you can go from device to device to device with the mouse. Yes, that works. And I think that that's fine. But for me, I love these mice so much, I'd rather have two of them. So I have a wireless version and then I have a wired version. Once again, it goes back to productivity. This thing has about 12 or 14 different buttons that can be clicked, which is just sick. And then I use this all the time for editing. Also, talking about editing, I have one of these here, which is called a tour or a tour box. Can you guys see that? Maybe if I hold it like here, maybe, does it work? You know what, let me just do a top down, this way you can actually see it. There we go. I have one of these things. This is called a tour box. This makes my edit a lot easier. I can scroll back and forth and I can use this. There is a ton of different functionality on this and it literally sits here in my hand and I can just click whatever I need to click to be able to do my edits really quickly. 
So these are the type of devices that I have that I think that maybe some of these will be interesting for you to look into. If you're interested in any of that type of productivity stuff, um, let me know down below in the comment section and I might put together some more videos about it because I know some people wanted to know like how do I do my show notes? What do I do for this, that and the other thing? You know, maybe I'll get into some of this once again productivity type of stuff um, in in the future if you are interested in it. Anyways, I will put the links down below in the pinned comment as well as the description and also tell you exactly which one is which so that you can click on the one that is better for your use case. Also, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, throw this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, and Reddit and everywhere else. Also, if you are a subscriber, thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not, please consider doing so. And if you are, click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Immediately. If you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a thank you button right down here that you can click. That would be great. Give a dollar or two. If not, that's fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. I would love to have you. We have a bunch of members now and I'm starting to do new things for the members. I'm going to do some members only things coming up soon. Stay tuned for that. Also, if you're looking for a VPN or faster internet speeds or maybe better reliability, check out Speedify. We've been using them for over two months now and they've been working out fantastic. Matter of fact, every live broadcast I do, JC Lives, they all use Speedify because I don't go down when I'm using it. Anyways, check them out. They gave me a promo code, which is Christina. You get 20% off or you can simply click the link down below in the pinned comment as well as the description and you will immediately get 20% off. It will take you right where you need to go. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick them up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.